We're going to talk, we're going to cover a subject that we touched on briefly a little bit, but it's important, so we're going to touch on it again. We touched on it briefly in last Wednesday's live session. We're going to talk about consequence questions today, all right? In terms of you and your sales cycle, everybody has prospects in their pipeline. What's the million dollar question we're all asking all the time, every time? How do I speed up my sales cycle? I know these people need my stuff. I know my stuff is great. What the hell am I doing wrong that they're not buying from me? Okay, I want you guys to ask yourself, how do we speed up the sales cycle? Somebody give me a suggestion. How do you, not Dave, because he's driving. Uh, how, hey Dave, what's up brother? Um, how do we speed up the sales cycle? Drop your price. Boom, who said that, BJ? Yes. The most obvious reason, right? The most obvious way that you, we think we can speed up our sales cycle is to drop our price. Not so though, because here's the piece that's missing and what most sales coaching is missing and what most sales managers sales reps and vice president of sales and business owners and entrepreneurs like yourself don't understand. Are you ready? Blow your mind. The person that you're working with cannot read your mind. Your buyer, your prospect, your customer does not have the ability to enter your soul. Not yet. Elon Musk is working on a little neural link. Maybe we'll be able to link up here pretty soon, but until Elon comes up with a chip in our head. I can't read BJ's mind. Why is that important to realize? That is important to realize because if BJ lowers his price in order to speed up the sales cycle with me, how the hell am I supposed to know that that's the lowest price I'm going to get? So BJ says something like this. You know what, Matt, if, you know, if we could get this deal done before the end of the month, what, what I'm willing to do is lower the price by about 15%, okay? I was born at night, but I wasn't born last night. And I know that the first week of next month, if I call BJ and go, yo, BJ, I am ready to sign. I want you to build my website. I want you to do my SEO campaign. I want whatever it is that we're selling, right? I want what you pitched me last month. Oh yeah, I still need the 15%, okay? Discounts are like bullets. And how bullets work in guns is once you pull that trigger, that bullet goes out the barrel, it's not coming back anymore, okay? And I'm not saying there's not a time and a place for a discount, okay? Happens typically in the negotiation phase, not in the closing phase, two totally different times, right? But when our first inclination of how do I speed up this sales cycle by lowering our price is wrong, because in many cases, when we lower our price to speed up the sales cycle, we actually slow the sales process down because somebody that was close to buying goes, huh, Drew's gonna give me 5% off this week. What if I wait until next week? Okay, we're in a recession right now. You guys probably remember in the past, remember the department stores, the going out of biz? Who's gone through a, a store that's quote unquote going out of business? You all have a carpet store in your city that has been going out of business for the last 40 years, but it's always like 5% off and then that's crossed out, 25% off and then that's crossed out, right? And then it says all sales final and then 75% off, 90% off, right? You know that you're now gonna roll the dice. Is that sofa still gonna be there? but we know the price is going down. So when we think in terms of speeding up our sales cycle, a discount doesn't really get us there. And in many cases, it actually delays the sale because the person's going, you know what, if I just wait, the price is gonna get better. The other way that we can speed up our sales cycle and the actual skillful way to speed up our sales cycle is what we're gonna talk about right now. We're gonna get this person that we're working with we're gonna get this prospect, this buyer, to understand the consequences of not doing the thing that they need to do. The consequences of not revamping the website. The consequences of not doing an ad campaign with us. When we can get them to understand the consequences, that carries a lot more weight, okay? So we're going to get them to think about, you know, BJ, 
just just out of curiosity, I know we were going to do the ad campaign for you. What if we don't do anything and the calls coming into your business continue to slow down for the next three months, six months, 12 months? What, what happens at that point? And then we're shutting up and we're letting that person sit with that. We're waiting until they give us an answer. Far too often in sales, guys, we know our product is right for them. We know we're gonna change their life. We're sold on what we're selling, but then we focus on crap like discounts and promotions and this type of tonality. Hey, hey, BJ, how you doing? Sucks on the World Series, right? Man, I was really hoping Philly would win. Hey, so just calling to see if we can do that website for you, right? Sometimes we've gotta be a little bit more skillful and we've gotta be a little bit more like a doctor and be asking them questions. You know, BJ, what, what happens if you guys don't do anything about this, right? And listen to my tonality, okay? What, Drew, I, I, got, I got it, I, I understand. I, I realize what's going on right You're paying about seven bucks a click to bring traffic to the website. Uh, and it sounds like they're, they're bouncing right now and every time somebody lands on the page spends 15 seconds and leaves that's costing you guys seven dollars and but just out of curiosity drew has it always been seven dollars or were you paying less before i was paying five bucks last year matt got it and what were you paying the year before that i mean we've paid as low as 250 a click got it so it seems like the price per click is increasing, the quality of leads are decreasing, and the amount of time that people are sitting on the website is going down pretty rapidly. Drew, what if, what if we don't do anything about this? What if we don't solve this problem and this problem gets worse? At what point do you kind of cross the line where it just doesn't even make sense to advertise or worse, right? And let Drew sit with that idea. Guys, you are sold on your business. You're sold on your solutions, okay? If there's anybody on this session today that's like, dude, I sell a bunch of crap and it doesn't help people's business, please cancel your Easton University membership right now and go find something else to do. Because I can't help you if you're sleazy and you don't add value to people's lives. Nobody on this call is that person. We all know that we can help our clients. But unfortunately, when we focus on things like lowering the price, that doesn't do anybody any good. Can you imagine if Dave had something wrong with his knee and the doctor and Dave was like, dude, I don't want physical therapy. Physical therapy sucks. That sounds terrible. I got to take time out of my day. I got to schedule an appointment. I'm going to have some lady yelling at me with rubber bands. I am not into that. And they called Dave back and we're like, Dave, you really need this. The physical therapy is really going to be helpful for you. And by the way, Dave Calfiore, just for you, buddy, if we can schedule your first physical therapy appointment, it's 75% off. Okay. How much does Dave want to do physical therapy? But what if that person called the, hey Dave, it's uh, Matt Easton here from Easton PT. Uh, wanted to talk to you a little bit about the, the knee. Yeah, yeah, how, how are things with the knee, right? Uh, they're about the same. And remind me again of where that knee's hurting you the most, you know, going up and down stairs. Uh, just out of curiosity, Dave, what if you don't do anything about this and the problem gets worse? How, how much longer are you gonna be able to live with that pain? And then wait for Dave to answer, well, I mean, I, I didn't really think about it that way. What, what happens when you can't make it up the stairs? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, that, that, would, be, that would be bad. Uh, you know, based on our experience, if you wait, and fortunately we're not having that conversation at this point, I just want to make sure you're aware well, there's a point where physical therapy cannot help you anymore. And then you're looking at knee replacement surgery, right? Does it make sense for us to get started on this? 
We have to work through the consequences. I don't care if we're selling a website, if we're selling an ad campaign, physical therapy, sales coaching, right? What if you guys don't teach the sales team how to close and the problem gets worse and you lose another sales rep, okay? So does anyone wanna walk through some examples, I'm happy to coach you on this, of things like what would happen if Okay, how much longer will you put up with? All right, and let me give you one real easy one to spark this conversation. Before each meeting you have, a really good and skillful idea is to start that phone call, that conversation with this question. Right, let's say I'm talking to BJ. Uh, BJ, j just out of curiosity, uh, w what's the most important thing that we need to accomplish on this call today? You're gonna find that that person is gonna basically shine that flashlight on where their problem is. Well, you know, we're, we're just, and they're all, they always sugarcoat it, right? Well, we're, we're just really not happy with Alphabet and, and Meta. Uh, you know, our pay-per-click has gone up, so I figure I'd be worth it to take a couple minutes and talk to you guys about what, what you do on that end, right? What, what we do on that end? Yeah, yeah, I mean, our bounce rate on our website's pretty high. Got it, T talk to me about what's going on in that situation, right? Well, I mean, we've got about a 40% bounce rate. 40%? How long has it been at 40%? Uh, basically since the end of COVID. Got it, and what have you done to try and improve it? Uh, we've tripled our spend with Google. Got it. At, at what point are you going to kind of cross the line where you can't afford to continue to spend that kind of money with Google? Uh, that would be four months ago, right? Now you're having a good conversation. Do you see how when I take the conversation around the consequence of not doing anything, where does a discount fall into any of that? It's almost counterproductive to offer a discount. That works out great for you, not having to discount, saving you some margins, but who does that work out better for? It works out better for your clients, guys. Because when they're like, man, I talked to BJ, he brought it up, you know, he was asking me, how much longer are we gonna live with this crappy traffic that we're having? And what are the ramifications? There's another one, write that down. What are the ramifications if we don't do anything? I'm gonna tell you right now, the way our comp plan is, we better go to straight salary or we're gonna lose half of our sales reps if we keep getting bad leads in here, right? So who's got questions around consequence questions? I've got answers for you. We need to embrace this. We need to lean into this, especially in the economy the way it is now. Discounting is what everybody else is doing and it's causing every client to just base you on price, they're not gonna do anything, and they're gonna bounce two seconds after buying from you because they were never sold on the solution. Who's got questions?